This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, this is Calimar here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. We have another miraculous redesign video today, and it's on probably the most requested character in my comments, Master Fu. Well done, you finally convinced me to acknowledge the existence of arguably the worst character in the show. Sure, he doesn't do any creepy or stupid things like Marinette, but do keep in mind, this monster is the very person who thought it would be a good idea to give two of the most important powers in the world to two middle schoolers who haven't even figured out puberty yet. And for what? For why? Preventing an old man from being hit by a car? I'd like to think most people would do that. How bad is it in Paris that helping the elderly is such an unusual act that is a worthy enough deed to be given superpowers? Maybe it's secretly a social commentary on how hardened and cold the city is despite the clean streets, bright poppy colors, the abundance of friendly people who I have no doubt would have done the exact same thing Marinette and Adrian did. Excellent infrastructure and high quality of living given that only one person is ever pissed off enough to be akumatized in a single day. No, of course not. It's only because Master Fu was the OG Adrianette chipper the show used to push the soulmate narrative a bit too hard with little to no returns. And I'll talk about this a little bit more down the line, but just know that Master Fu as a character has such little relevance to the main plot and characters despite being placed in such an integral role. Almost like the show just put him there because it's an empty niche they felt they needed to fill because every other show is doing it, but didn't really have any plans for the character himself. And what they did do with him is make him play favorites with Marinette while completely ignoring Adrian despite giving both a miraculous. Like, this man purposefully decided to leave Adrian in the dark about everything, never even going to meet or talk to him. And I guess you could say he never really sought Marinette out either because she came to find him, but then I end up wondering why he decided to go with such a hands-off approach in the first place when the two people he chose to wield the most powerful miraculouses in the Chinese miracle box were literal children who would need guidance more than anyone. No, I actually do know. If he looked after both Marinette and Adrian and brought them in to talk about actual important things, then those two would figure out each other's secret identities and the show would prefer to prioritize their stupid love square for maximum misunderstandings and melodrama. I'm just gonna say it, it's all Master Fu's fault. Every single stupid thing that happens in the show is entirely his fault for giving literal superpowers to children and then letting them run loose on the city with no guidance or instruction and stupidly playing into Hawk Moth's plans. So there. There's a lot to be fixed and revised about Master Fu, so let's just get into it. Also, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? It's free, and you get notified on all my new videos, so, you know, subscribe and hit the bell or whatever. But before we get into the design, I'd like to give a big thank you to a regular sponsor and friend of the channel, Squarespace. You guys know I love Squarespace. They are the best all-in-one platform for building your online presence or running your business. Thanks to Squarespace, I was able to build my own website for my original Magical Girl story to compile information in an easily accessible way and continue to build the world of the story for you guys. So not only can you build a professional looking art portfolio, you can also set up a page for your art commissions or use it as a place to compile your original stories and characters and make it look really legit. Squarespace lets you do all that for free using their free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Calimara or use code Calimara, that's C-A-L-L-I-M-A-R-A, -A to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm gonna make him hot. Why? Because I can. There is no rhyme or reason to it except that I enjoy simping and no one can stop me. Because if you're watching this right now, you're all too late. Now, this is risky, risky business. I've never drawn a gilf before, but I will try my best. 
Plus, Master Fu's old person design in particular is very forgiving, because man's lived all the way to 186 with only a receding hairline and not a single wrinkle. In fact, his hair hasn't even turned entirely white yet. And his skin looks great. So I'm going to take that in stride and run with it, turn it up to 100. I definitely want him to still have a full head of hair and some wrinkles to show his age though. Personally, I don't think it's that unrealistic because I've taken care of 80 to 90 year old men before who still have full heads of hair. And they're actually quite dapper. I actually have seen some very fit older men as well. As long as you have good genes and keep up a regular exercise routine and eat well, it can definitely prevent muscle loss and bone degradation and I imagine Master Fu would be very fit from his background. Plus, I think we can just operate on the anime rule of young person who is actually hundreds of years old. I mean, just look at Kiyoshi. That woman was 230 years old and looked like this when she died. So in my version, I want him to be this young at heart older man that never quite grew up. I want him to look playful and bright eyed but deep down, he's still struggling with his past demons. And that's why he can't quite move forward. He definitely carries a lot of guilt and shame for what he did and in my version at least, he would have spent a good portion of his life roaming the world in search for the missing miraculous and spellbook. It also opens up the possibility that the reason he and Marianne, the love of his life who he met in Paris, parted ways the first time was because she found him emotionally immature and unavailable. She wanted something stable, a future with him, but he couldn't give her that because of his circumstances. Canonically, Master Fu is very much the laid back type and this is actually shown pretty well in his design. Aside from his nonchalance at the entire world falling apart, even in Siren, the choice of a Hawaiian shirt with the collar not buttoned up all the way and loose cargo pants really reflected this well. But we see this more clearly in how the Turtle Miraculous camouflages itself with him. A loose rope bracelet and amulet. Simple, humble, and understated. So I wanted to carry those vibes over in my design. Just putting him in something looser and more casual that would contrast Gabriel's redesign. I kept the open color shirt, but decided to put him in something less tacky, I guess. Pants are pretty standard, but I did want it to be something loose and comfortable, and that was about it as far as the outfit goes. I wanted to keep things simple, but flattering. Another big change for his redesign was his hairstyle. Since Master Fu has a full head of hair in my version, I decided why not go all the way and give him a bit of length too. I love these longer, choppy hairstyles on men because of how playful and flirty it looks. It would also require less maintenance because they don't need to visit the barber as often and it looks effortlessly good. Maybe they'd probably need to use more hair care products, but eh, it's a give and take. The idea for the longer hair was mostly inspired by Chinese period dramas and manhuas where long hair is commonplace, and I think it would help indicate that Master Fu came from a time long past, but slightly updated to modern trends as he assimilates into Western European cultures. As for his superhero outfit, I actually like the current one a lot. Aside from the Fox Miraculous, the Turtle Miraculous is definitely one of the more fashionable ones in the Chinese Miracle Box. I love how they made Master Fu's costume kind of look like armor from the Han Dynasty. And I love how his shield also doubles as a hat. In my design, the Jade Turtle wears his hair in a bun underneath his hat, just like Han Dynasty soldiers would. So I really had no qualms with it and just kept it as it is. But one thing I did change was his mask. I really like how I did Mad Dog's mask, which was a mouth mask instead of an eye mask, and I think it would be a fun alternative for the hero designs, and Master Fu seemed like a good fit for it, and I really like how it tied everything together. I mostly just wanted to do a dynamic pose and updated the body shape to his current one, though canonically I do imagine this was what Master Fu might have looked like when he was younger. And with the design out of the way, let's move on to my ideas for how we can revise Master Fu's story and role in the show. So I'll be honest, I really, really don't like Master Fu. Not quite as much as I dislike Marinette, but that's only because he barely gets any screen time. 
Even then, he's pretty damn close. I guess the thing that bothers me the most about him is how stupid his decisions are despite having been alive for nearly 200 years. Sure, put these very important miraculous you were meant to protect back into circulation because your Kwame had a vague dream about the miraculous you lost and changed nothing even after it has become apparent that the villain wreaking havoc in the city is after those exact miraculous you gave away. And not only that, give them to preteens of all people. Humans at the stage of life famously known for making stupid, impulsive decisions and mistakes. Sure, sure. I bet they remind you a lot of you, huh? And for what? Showing bare minimum human decency? Not even testing if they have the right qualifications? He was lucky Adrian turned out to be an athlete with some knowledge of self-defense and Marinette as creative. He literally knew nothing about the people he was giving these important jewelry to. And yes, I know that in canon, Ladybug and Chat Noir kind of time-traveled back and said hi to him when he was younger, and that's why he knew to put the Ladybug and Cat Miraculous into circulation, but he didn't know that Ladybug and Cat Noir were actually children at that time. And I know, I know this is meant to be audience wish fulfillment. Don't you want some stranger to just immediately recognize some hidden potential you didn't know you had from just one interaction? We all want it to be special. I get it. I've been there. But it was embarrassing and shameful, and when you get a bit older, you'll feel the same way too. Also, why are you getting new, inexperienced heroes to take care of the problem you caused? Do you not have the experience and all the miraculous at your disposal to track down the two missing ones? Oh, Callie, he's old. He's not as spry as he used to be. Shut up. In Miracle Queen, we literally see him transform and go up against Hawk Moth and Mayura at the same time. If he just intervened before Natalie even started using the Peacock Miraculous, I'm confident he would have won because Gabe over here isn't exactly the best brawler on the street and Master Fu would have at least had a few hundred years of martial arts experience. Besides, isn't the whole point of the Miraculous to turn you into invincible superheroes with superhuman abilities that can take brutal physical punishment with absolutely no repercussions to their human bodies? To give him some benefit of the doubt, maybe he thought Hawk Moth was actually a good villain? Like, an actual threat. One you would need to be wary of, but in reality, he just really overestimated what he was up against. Makes sense, right? So why leave the children alone, unsupervised, to deal with a threat you didn't want to deal with? Are you Pink Diamond? Hmm? What is this? Seriously, what is this? I hate this character. I hate that he feeds into Marinette's ego and main character complex and I hate that he blatantly neglects Adrian. Damn, Adrian can't catch a break. He just gets neglected by every adult character that should have been a guardian figure for him. The show keeps doing him dirty. But back to Master Fu. I'm actually glad the show wiped his memories and booted him to London because him being in the story actually made the whole thing a lot worse than if he wasn't there in the first place. If he wasn't there, that would give the audience room to forgive why Marinette and Adrian were forced to figure things out by themselves, one mistake at a time. But because he is there, he appears useless and outright negligent. Which isn't that inaccurate considering he was the reason why the miraculous spellbook butterfly and peacock miraculous went missing and why the temple of guardians was destroyed in the first place why because he got hungry when he was told to guard a miracle box for 24 hours 24 hours it's not even a hard job so he used the Peacock Miraculous to create a Senti Monster to get him some food, but because he hated the Guardians and Miraculous, the Senti Monster turned evil and wanted to eat the Miraculous. That's right, officers. It was this dumbass right here. Anyone who tries to say, oh, Miraculous is actually very profound and has a very mature lore, Shut up! <laughs> it was and always will be built on idiocy and it will never be able to escape that unless it actively retcons the events that transpired. And that's not to say I hate characters who make stupid mistakes with extremely dire consequences. 
Heck, that was the entire premise of Avatar The Last Airbender, and it's one of my all-time favorite TV shows. But unlike that show's main protagonist, Aang, Master Fu never really tries to make up for his mistakes. Instead, he spends his entire life running from everything. As far as we know, he's never even tried looking for the two missing miraculous or spellbook. He was just like, hmm, I can't see it anymore, so I guess it no longer exists. He caused all this damage and chaos and did nothing to amend his mistakes. Not even by mentoring the next generation of heroes and guardians. It just makes me think that the show never really thought that far ahead and just made everything up on the fly because, oh, wouldn't it be cool if ABC, XYZ, which is fine and all, just don't act like your show is the best thing ever since sliced bread. So if you want a quick answer as to how I would fix this character, Kill him! <laughs> or at least make the memory erasure happen sooner, somehow. He wanted to mentor Cat Noir and Ladybug to take over his role, gradually training them up to become full heroes, but Hawk Moth managed to find him first and cut him down before he was able to do so. Oh, that just gave me a great idea for the rewrite. As I've elaborated on before in the design section of this video, my version of Master Fu is more of a tormented character who never lets on how much he really struggles on the inside. He puts on a happy, carefree facade to put others at ease and believe that everything is fine and dandy when in reality, he carries a lot of guilt and a burden he never wanted in the first place. This version of Master Fu is… a coward. He can't face the mistakes he made in the past, the lives and the legacy he cost from one stupid decision, so he spent his entire life running, pretending those things aren't there. If he just kept moving, if he just kept busy, he wouldn't have time to remember and reflect. He refuses to allow himself to process his loss, his grief, his pain. He just keeps moving forward forcing himself to remain blind to the mistakes he left behind. And his senti monster is the very embodiment of all that. All the mistakes he made, the resentment he held, and the guilt he couldn't face. Frozen in time. So he runs. His choice to use the Turtle Miraculous is not to protect others, but to protect himself. To have a shell he can retreat into and hide from the world in. This Master Fu is… selfish immature. He thinks of himself first and others never. He may have a silver tongue and know all the right things to say, but when it comes down to it, he won't be there when you need him. I imagine that Master Fu would hold a lot of resentment toward the Chinese miracle box. After all, he never wanted it. It was forced upon him and it ended up costing him his home, his friends, and the life he lived before. Eventually, he meets Marianne and she gives him a glimpse of a life he never thought he could have. And for a little while, he indulged in that fantasy, pretending that he could be a normal man living a normal life, but it all came crashing down eventually. Marianne didn't want to live in a fantasy. She wanted to live in the real world, whereas he was the exact opposite. When the Nazis invaded France, he ran away even though he could have fought back, because that was all he'd ever known. But for the first time ever, he regretted his decision to run away. After losing Marianne, he finally found the courage to try and face his mistakes. So he embarked on his travels once more, searching for the missing miraculous and spell book. But at that point, they were all long gone, and whatever trace there had been of them had faded. Another failure to add on to his mountain of regrets. Defeated, he returned to Paris in the hopes of finding Marianne the one chance he still had at doing something right, and he had made up his mind to give up the Chinese miracle box, the one connection he had left to his past and the object that had caused him so much loss and grief, so much pain and suffering, to have a fresh start. So he threw the box into the Seine, praying that the miraculous would disappear from the world forever. But through some mysterious magic, or perhaps the will of the Chinese miracle box itself. It opens, releasing the cat and ladybug miraculous. And that was how Marinette and Adrian got their miraculouses. 
by some design of fate, being at the right place at the right time by the Seine River. It also explains a way why Master Fu took so long to get in contact with them and why he wasn't there to train them when they first activated their Miraculous. It's simply because he didn't think there would be any more Miraculous users. So imagine his surprise when Waze not only senses the Butterfly Miraculous, but the Cat and Ladybug Miraculous as well. Naturally, he goes and seeks out the two users and to try and find out how on earth they managed to get their hands on a Miraculous. And instead of meeting only Marinette in her civilian form, he tracks down both Marinette and Adrian and meets them in their transformed states. They don't trust him at first, so to earn their trust, he too transforms using his own Miraculous. Initially, he demanded that they return the Cat and Ladybug Miraculous, because they're too powerful to be left in the hands of inexperienced users. But when they get ambushed by Hawk Moth's minions, they're forced to fight their way out together. And seeing the two work together and wield their Miraculous with surprising proficiency, he realizes that perhaps they are a way he can make up for his mistakes, by passing on the legacy of the Miraculous to someone more deserving. In the end, he decides to let Ladybug and Cat Noir keep their Miraculous, and that he will train them to become proper users. He puts the two through a superhero boot camp to increase their proficiency and familiarity of their powers and abilities, acting as a proper mentor figure to the two. Of course, he would have always met them in their transformed states and isn't aware that they were both actually children. Eventually, he opens up to them about his mistakes and regrets after they recover the miraculous spellbook and passes on his hopes to them. However, Master Fu recognizes a similar resentment and anger in Adrian that he had in himself, and he worries that Adrian might go down the same path he did. In this version, I can see Master Fu acting as kind of a surrogate father to Adrian, trying to guide him onto the right path to avoid making the same mistakes he did, but likely to little success. But at the same time, while Ladybug and Cat Noir were facing Hawk Moth's Akumas on the front lines, Master Fu was tracking down Hawk Moth to retrieve the Butterfly Miraculous. And he succeeded. He managed to find him, but Hawk Moth was a step ahead, and instead led him into an ambush with Mayura's help. Because instead of Hawk Moth, he was now face to face with his Senti Monster. We switch the screen to Marinette, who wakes up in cold sweat in the middle of the night, sensing something wrong. She transforms and takes off in search of something, somewhere. She let her intuition guide her, and it led her to the aftermath of the battle, on a lonely rooftop of an abandoned building. Master Fu lay bloodied and dying, ways crying next to him. Marinette felt sick to her stomach, witnessing the sight before her. She launched into a barrage of questions. Who had done this to him? How did this happen? Why? Tears spilled down her face her chest growing tight in distress. The world was spinning around her, such that she barely noticed the Senti monster stirring and getting back onto its feet. It attacked, and Master Fu called out too late. The attack connected and hit her hard, so hard it knocked her unconscious. Her unconsciousness caused her to detransform, and for the first time, Master Fu realized that she was only a child. She was a child, and she was being put through all this. No, Marinette was different from him. She chose to do this. She wanted to do this. And at that point, he knew. So he forced himself to transform one last time and jumped into action, finding the strength within him to defeat Senti Monster once and for all and unleashing the Amok. But at what cost? Feeling his strength begin to disappear, he detransforms and falls to the ground once more. Marinette was quick to come to, and remembering the events that transpired, she rushes to Master Fu's side once again, telling him that she was going to call an ambulance and that he had to stay awake. But Master Fu stops her, and instead, apologizes for putting so much responsibility on her shoulders. He tells her that he had always been selfish and a failure. But now, he knows that he had finally done one thing right, and that he believes 
she and Cat Noir could undo the mistakes he made. He asks a favor of her, to go to the River Seine and find the Miracle Box, retrieve the Butterfly and Peacock Miraculous, and to deliver a message to his love, Marianne, should she ever meet her, and tell her that he had always loved her and that he wished he had stayed. He pushes the Turtle Miraculous and a picture of Marianne into her hand, and with those last words, Ladybug became the new guardian of the Miraculous. As a farewell, she purifies the Amok and places it on his chest. She takes off and soon, ambulance sirens fill the silence. And that's where we'll end it for now. Did you like my redesign and rewrite of Master Fu? Did you hate it? Well, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. It really means a lot to me. I want to thank my lovely pond dwellers for supporting me. And if you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my designs and videos, then join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!